Good afternoon. Bob, I was waiting for that loud voice. I was All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. All right. <laughs> Thanks again. Appreciate you all being here. It's always amazing to see somebody from the age up and I'm always in the office. And you know, this is why it's more important with the proposal here, right? It's all about synergy. And thank you. Thank you all. Give yourself a round of applause. All right. <clears throat> Who wants to uh, start with our mission beliefs? Anyone want to volunteer? Bob. Wow. <laughs> You're the chosen one. Our mission to provide agents with a place where they will be empowered, trained, and motivated to experience growth, wealth, and a legacy that allows them to live their best possible life. Yes, sir. <laughs> Our beliefs. When the values of your company align with your own beliefs, you know you found your professional home. Our vision. To achieve amazing professional and personal development so that KW South Bay remains the agency of Troy. Yes. All right, let's continue. Next slide. By the way, I'm using a new camera. The audio might be a little better. So for the for the agents that are not here in person, I think they should be able to hear us. Don't worry, many the camera's behind here too. So I have it there. <laughs> we want to thank our affiliate for providing us with the uh, Jersey uh, Mike sandwiches. So let's give uh, Justin Rose the We're getting a little next, but we give him an opportunity to uh, say a little bit about his uh, home warranty. All right, next slide. All right, let's uh, welcome our newest uh, members to the family. Uh, who wants to help me with the name? Because I always mess up the name. Bob, <laughs> Rosie, it's your turn. I'll go to that. I take up my name, Rosie. All right. Well, let's do this. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Amira. So let's yeah. welcome Amira. Yeah. I'll give a shout out to Oh, you got the third one. Arvin. Arvin. Yes. Carl. Mina. Mina. <laughs> And I'll do the last one, except September, right? So welcome to uh, the uh, KW South Bay office. You know, we're so grateful and uh, that you have chosen the uh, South Bay uh, uh, company of choice. So you got somebody to call, by the way, if you point them out, if they want to be pointed out. We might go to the USC. Oh, where's? Where's There. <laughs> well, I want to share a quick story. I was actually with uh, Mina this morning at 10 o'clock. And uh, I was looking at my time, making sure that I had my time allotted for her to uh, meet. And before you know it, it was an hour and 30 minutes later, and we were still talking. It's like, it's ready for a team meeting. So, you know, we had a great conversation. So thank you again for uh, taking time to come with us. All right. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. All right. Let's continue. Next slide, please. All right, is uh, Maria giving us some updates on that school today? Can you hear me, Lynn? I love working here. I love working with all of you. And I love you too, Maria. <laughs> you know, I uh, get to know you each more and more in my work. So just so you know, in uh, October on the 19th at 10.30, I'm going to do a net sheet class. That means I'm going to go over all the line items on the net sheet in detail and let you know what they are, what they stand for, what they represent, so you can relay that to your client. When you meet with them and you show them the net sheet, you'll know what you're talking about when you go over it with them, and you can explain what each fee stands for. That's really important. You only have a drawing for $100 an Amazon card for Ooh, whatever yeah. you Leadership, uh, get for whatever you <laughs> <laughs> but whoever you set, so um, in the last 30 days. So we're going to go and get some. Okay. 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 All right, here we go. One. One. Okay. Is L of Dana here? <laughs> Maria, 
actually, I have another gift too. So okay. let's let's do another drawing for someone else. Oh, okay. What's that be? All right, one more. Okay, here we go. Who's the lucky person? Cheyenne. <laughs> So come on up here. So just, just to share a story, most of you saw probably uh, social media was in uh, in uh, Las Vegas for the uh, Black Belt Team Leader uh, uh, Mastermind. Thank you. And this is something that they gave us, and I ended up picking a couple of them because I thought it was pretty cool. So it's a, a phone charger, but what I like about this uh, phone charger is that it has the adapter for different phones. But what I like, it says uh, KW. So, I'm going to do my next sheet for everyone. Uh, I'm talking to you to come up for a notary. You just remember, you don't have to pay for any notary services if you need. Come upstairs anytime or just give me a call and we'll set up a time for you. If you need that service and next sheet, you send me an email. So, the things I need to know are the property address, most importantly, your commission percent, and uh, if the property is owner occupied, because you want to know if we're going to include that software for the whole thing, that's a big chunk. Okay? All right, let me you again. Come to me. I'm upstairs. Thank you. 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 So let me just think of these last two goals. So let's, uh, let's continue. Next slide, please. All right, we have our guest speaker, uh, Maria. So, uh, where's Maria? Maria, welcome. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so thank you so much, Maria, for uh, coming in. So, what are you uh, going to be talking to us about? Okay, so, um, hi, everybody. So, uh, my name is Maria Pinusco. I'm an estate planning attorney. So, uh, some of, often people confuse taking them to real estate planning attorney, which is not. Estate planning uh, means, hopefully, all of you know, the, the reason why I come to presentations like this is to share the information to make sure that you understand the concept and you can enjoy the planning process. So, my idea is for all of the agents, all the professionals, to be not just the agents who sold or purchased the software for the a uh, client collected their fees and bought. No, I would appreciate all of you to become trusted advisors for the client. So you are the point of contact for them. But creating those personal relationships with each and every client, hopefully, it doesn't happen all the time, but it, it should be all of our attempts. So if they need a farmer, they call you. I don't know if you want that. <laughs> but, but, but that's how we see that. So if they need real estate, if they need to sell a buy, you're the first one there with to call you to the next time. So I need to connect. Yeah. So, Matt, if you can uh, allow Maria to uh, share her computer, too, please. Am I allowed? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I was told that I have half an hour. You know, my presentation will usually last a lot longer, but I'll try to make it uh, as short and as important as it's possible, please. So, I'm um, Maria Simmons, I'm with MVP Logo. MVP actually stands for my initials. Very convenient. I realized that 10, 10 years after practice, I've been for a while at the law offices of Maria D. Simmons, the professional law profession, you know, that's better than I would call MVP. Okay, <laughs> so uh, today uh, we're going to talk about the purpose of the statement, what it is, and uh, how it relates to your uh, to what you do. Here's something about myself. I probably from the acting to the Taliban adoption. I was born and born in Soviet Russia uh, at the age of uh, uh, 11. I realized that I wanted to become an attorney. So I had this personal monogarity to protect people. I thought 
movies. I want to explore the water. So uh, that's why I decided to do graduate from State University, became an attorney, uh, worked for half a year at the DA's office in the State University, with my ideas uh, about going to work in the there were two movies. Um, and uh, so I then immigrated here to my husband, the pregnant. Great little story. Started all my way from in my life, taxi driver, hospital, lady, man, and I was to it all. And then I decided that I still want to be the attorney. So I graduated law school here, found the law school the first time. Maria, and if uh, you can come more in the center uh, so that Mike can hear you. Oh, yeah. Okay. People, on people complaining. <laughs> they're, not, they're, not, they're, they're not complaining. So, uh, <laughs> so I just can't, can't hear you. <laughs> so, um, opened my office in 2009, uh, and the rest of the history. Uh, for the past five years, I've been uh, concentrating on state planning because uh, when I graduated from university or uh, even law school here, I worked at city attorney's office, or uh, volunteer at city attorney's office here. And what I realized that it doesn't matter which continent you live in, which country you live in, the system is the system. Mm -hmm. And as soon as your affairs get in touch with the system, in all of those years, you get. Stuff with it. And what I'm trying to do now is to make sure that people have power in their own hands and they do not allow the government to kind of make the government. <laughs> and so I want you to be in power. I want people to decide for themselves what they want to do with their lives, how to protect themselves, their families, their assets, what they want so hard for life. And do not allow a judge clerk to put a mug on your file. And wait years until your case gets resolved and probably court, which we'll get to. Um, so I passionately care about this. I'm a business person, I'm a mother, I'm a pet owner, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm all what people have all this um hat they wear. And it all comes down to ultimately to what I do state plan. So all of you. The person at the age of 18 must have a plan. People think that they have to have an estate on North Holland Drive to start plan, which I'm trying to fight for because what uh, rich people who have an actual estate on North Holland Drive, they have the little time to cover the usual. They have all the attorney's offices work for them, not all the time. But once what I'm trying to uh, do is to give information to regular middle class uh, Americans who work hard. But they don't know. I, for my, um, what I think is like a conspiracy to do in theory. People don't know what's possible, how they can protect themselves, their children uh, from uh, the uh, extent, extra extent of a half of the public court and the system. Um, okay. So, what are the types of ownership uh, possible? So you can own, I'm, I'm going now to do what actually concerns you. Uh, you. You can own as a sole proprietor. So I'm going to talk about types of ownership and what a type of type of ownership is about. So while, you, while you're buying or selling property for your client, you, you, you see the, the dynamics. We really, really learn about the, the clients, about their families, about their kids. Uh, you know, it could be variety. It could be a single person, it could be partners, they could be partners, they could be coming from blended families, they could be disabled child, they could be, you know, the older, you know, parents coming to live with them. So all of those has uh, different consequences for their future. What's going to happen to this particular property in case while you're living, uh, in case of your incapacity, or in case you have passed away? Who's going to own what? So you, I have so many sad stories to tell. I, I hate to see those phone calls when it's too late and nothing can be done, especially for the past uh, two years, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the, the COVID, especially, you know, people check out quickly. And, uh, you know, I'm a little sexist here and for the guys because, you know, all those providers for the families, because the most regular families where our husband is a breadwinner. 
and uh, pass away, you know, like forties. Uh, and uh, and when uh, wives end up with nothing or families who they support with, and uh, no planning, disarray, and so chaos. So my idea is for each and every person, doesn't matter if male or female, leave after that, think about not what's going to happen now. If you do not come home tomorrow or today, what's going to happen to your family? Are you responsible? You're going to leave a legacy. You are one of the you know, ideas of, of, of your office, leaving a legacy and leaving a legacy. Or you're going to, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be a house after you pass away. One lady came to me when her husband passed and she was so, she was crying. And she didn't know what to do, where to go. And she told me, okay, if he is erected right now, I'd kill him myself. <laughs> <laughs> because because of how irresponsible he, he is he left all this mess with me with two kids i don't know what to do where to go so so owner it's uh basically personal to his or her name uh what are the cons uh again if something happens uh, to the person passes away then uh if they don't have a plan if they don't have a plan for uh, who's inheriting the property, the state has the plan and it's not the best. Uh, possible unintended beneficiaries or beneficiaries you would want to include, they're not included. Again, there's a story for that, I don't have time. And um, um, also creators uh, can have access uh, to, your, to your assets and it, so it, it is not secure. Um, then tenants in common, as you know, tenants, uh, owning uh, shares a uh, certain percentage or a portion of the property in their own uh, names. And if they pass away, then uh, whoever is the next in kin or whoever is on the will or in the trust uh, will inherit the property. The problem is that tenants can check out and say, hey, I want to sell my share. I don't want to be with you anymore. That, 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 that's a problem. And still, there is, if there is no, if there is no uh, estate plan, then probably it's gonna be involved and the whole property will be tied into possible litigation or going through the pro uh, probate proceedings. We have a probate specialist here. Um, joint tenancy. I'm sure that most of you see that it's the most commonly used, used uh, type of ownership is joint tenancy. Husband and wife owning property is joint tenants. And that, uh, I, if I, I, I None of the state planning attorneys would advise that because what happens is again unintended beneficiaries. If, for example, husband and wife, and if there is a blended family, you know, people, children coming from different uh, different uh, relationship, and uh, let's say we let's say let's kill wife first this time. Usually, it's a guy thing. <laughs> So. So if uh, he, he, he decides to remarry, or if he loves his kids better than uh, wife's kids, but they purchased this property together and uh, invested in property together with labor or money, it doesn't matter. Uh, and now he can say, hey, only my kids get everything and her kids will be left behind. What's with the sole ownership? Let's go back, sole ownership. I'm sure you've seen for various reasons, sometimes even, a married couple put title on one of uh, one of the person's <laughs> names. Could be if they have better credits or better, you know, everything. So it's better to uh, fund or get receive lending money for for the property. So they put in place. Oh, they think that creators, you know, will be, uh, you know, be hiding one person with all the debts and the other person uh, stays with all all, all the good credit and, and clean credit. Um, and a lot of money. So, real situation, my friends. Uh, so she passed away. Of course, I told them to create a, a distinct plan. Never listen, right? Tomorrow, it's always tomorrow. Procrastination. And uh, so the title was held uh, in, in uh, uh, married woman as a, a sole and separate property. Married. So she passes away. It took me almost nine months to transfer title from her name to the name of the husband through the probate court. 
a lot of fees, 1500 just to start the case uh, in public court. And, and it is ridiculous, but that's the truth. Oh, thank God they had adult, they have adult children. Thank God children said, okay, Papa will get everything. But they had the right to raise their hands and say, hey, no, I want my third. And uh, you, the relationship can differ. Those kids, even if he's a or she good kid, his or her spouse can say, no, you have to get, you have the right to this, say no, you have to get it. So the father, the, the husband would have to sell the property, you know, give give the rest to kids and end up with nothing. With now rent prices, it would you know, last for how many years? So it's all unintended consequences, just because we didn't think, okay? And it's not always about the money. More often, it's about the feeling as like this, like, yeah, we kill him. Uh, it's the uh, living a legacy. So when kids come to me, uh, my clients die, but when uh, they have a plan, kids come to me to, for the, you know, what to do next, the, the atmosphere is peaceful. So we talk about the parents, you know, love, you know, remembering stories, etc. They know what to do next, I guide them. And when, whenever people come with probably it's when there was no plan, it's different, it's like hectic. It's you can see, it's like, what do we do? How come they didn't take care of us? And then they, when they find out how easy it was actually, they're like, okay, why? Why do we have to be in this situation? Just why? So that, what's, that's why I'm trying to spread the word to make sure, and hopefully through you, you can advise your clients, hey, now you, you got this profit, congratulations, here's the key. And I don't know what you, what your um, policy, but I've seen usually, you know, when my daughter was uh, in real estate, she would give uh, like folders to clients with the basic local plumber, locksmith, I don't know, insurance we, agent. We have something similar. It's uh, our KW hub, it's a site. And then that's where we have our resources and our affiliates as well. So yes. it makes it a lot easier for the It's agents. easier, but you know, when people get something, yeah, they yeah. they value it. People love the ribbons, you know, when they when they open something like with the key, it's a nice thing giving you little bit of something. Uh, so there also can be information about the statement. So I care about you. What's gonna happen next? I don't know. You I know you don't want to talk about death during the process of a person, <laughs> but after you're done, you hey, I care about your family. Uh, here's, I want to protect you. I, I want to make sure that you're beautiful family as you are, and now you're happy, just to to be protected. And that's involved. I, I, I don't know if you have uh, people coming from insurance companies to talk about uh, life insurance, property insurance, different types of protections, etc. Okay, where am I? Uh, tenancy by tariffs, it's similar. Um, uh, in all of these uh, scenarios, um, creators claims. So property is subject to creators, and special tenants, uh, jo joint tenants, for example. Sometimes people uh, say, hey, I don't want to spend uh, 3,500 3, on a stage plan. I'm just going to uh, put a title, my son, my, my child. So as a joint tenant, so if I pass, property passes, uh, goes automatically to, to my child and avoiding probate. Beautiful, that may work. Uh, however, if you have one, two, how many children you have. They all, oh, I trust my kids. <laughs> they will share with brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah, right. So they may, but again, their spouses, their kids, their, you know, uh, and the things among siblings change very fast. Uh, so again, you're losing control. That child can be subject to the creditor's claim, car accident, IRS, whatever. Um, and then your property that you worked so hard for all your life becomes, uh, you know, uh, available to creditors. You have they have to they can sell their their, their share and, and pay the creditors. Why worry about it? I do not want my clients, especially older to lose control. And all the people, you know, they usually grab first the wallet and the keys, you know? So I don't want them to even think and have this controversy in the family 
where they have to worry about, oh, you want them to die, so you can guess that, oh, you want to sell. So just avoiding unnecessary discomfort uh, and uh, keeping <coughs> control. And of course, now let's talk about uh, this one first. Uh, so limited liability company um, usually is advised to uh, title uh, property uh, and I will see when it is uh, the, the uh, investment company. <coughs> You rent it out, you collect the uh, fees, uh, and uh, not for your uh, house, uh, uh, main house usually. Again, for each and separate, it is advisable to keep the property, these properties and LLCs for trader protections, for asset protection reasons. And if there's, if you have clients with multiple properties, please advise them to have them in each and separate LLC, each property in a separate LLC. Again, a story because it, uh, the reason why we create LLC to protect uh, us uh, from the liability. So LLC only answers uh, to traders. One of my clients, uh, multi-property owners, didn't want to spend you know all the fees so, uh, on, on his CPA, uh, paying eight hundred dollars a year to uh, FTV. So uh, she got sued. So tenant claimed uh, mold exposure and uh, cases still pending. And of course, thank God that the claim was $500,000 under the insurance limit, so pretty good. But if the claim somebody fell and broke head, I don't know, brain something, injury or broke bones, whatever, or, or severe mold exposure, million dollars. That means that all of her properties that are part of the LLC will be available to creators. That's why we want to separate it. Or at least get an umbrella insurance. Yeah, you have a question. I have a question about that. One. One of the friends was like, totally wrong with this, right? And they, and they took them all in trust. We're going to go through the trust. Okay. Process. But still, in that situation, trust is good. Trust is the next step. When we have, when my clients have LLCs, then we transfer title. Uh, interest in LLC to the trust. So, the LLC, so LLC is, is still separate and that LLC to the trust. It's called a double layer protection. That's the best. That's what it should have been. That's the best. So in a trust, in a tr trust is the uh, uh, legal term. Uh, it's like, I call it as a treasure box. You create a trust, living trust. It's called living that it lives with you. So whatever changes you have in life, you, you you change your, your, your trust in that document you can you can decide that you who how to manage every your assets and your life while you're living while when you become incapacitated physically or mentally and when you pass away everything can be put in there the terms are you know the beauty, it's, it's a beauty so so for example while you're living, you become the trustee. So now uh, Jane and John will not own property in their own names as Jane and John, but Jane and John as trustees of the trust. So now you have a title and you manage, you become managers. Managers, it's kind of like a, an entity. So that's why we, you don't need probate. Probate is needed uh, because only person, him or herself, or probate judge can transfer title of the property so that's it now you you're transferring title to the trust and you can manage from the name of the trust that's why if you pass away you appoint successor trustee manager who can later on uh, transfer title and do whatever is necessary with the, with the property that's why probate is not re required everything is done in peace whenever you see tmz or people's magazine when the famous person dies if you see all the shenanigans about how many wives and kids they have, how many, uh, that means they don't have a trust. How come you have all these millions and no one, one attorney who advised you to create a trust? Uh, and when, when, when you don't hear anything about it, that means they have trust, everything is done peacefully within family. So family did what they have to do, mourn and then do whatever they do. And, and the probate process is public. So any neighbor can stick in the notes and find out how many of what you had, how many kids, how many kids from whenever, and uh, et, cetera, et cetera. So 
there is also so it's a revocable living trust yes how much does it cost to set up the trust uh varies okay. on legal zoom you can do it uh for six hundred dollars i tried that mm. the the binder is very nice though my mom's older and she has a property that's free and clear and would it be possible for me to set the trust up for her no so she will have to she will have to do and be mindful of that because when people creating a trust, I have to assert the capacity. So with older people, because I have, because the person has to be in the right mind. Right. Because with uh, sometimes even with diagnosis of dementia, or Alzheimer's, I, when I talk to people, I have to you know ask questions. How many kids do you have? What do you have? So basics, uh, uh, I get the basics and I decide that yes, they have capacity. They, that's what they want to do. But when it's too late, my mom is in a facility, she is uh, schizophrenia or whatever, or dementia, and that's nothing I can do. Then you have them, it's in capacity. If she had the trust, mm -hmm. she would say, hey, if I become incapacitated, my son will become in charge, no probate. Because now, if she, if she is uh, uh, out of her mind physically or, or, or physically cannot act, you have to go to probate, where it's called living probate, to get conservatorship over her. And that's 5000 to start the process. It's long and humiliating process. People have to actually be willed in into court and they decide how to strip you off your rights. Again, sex is here. You know, I've seen this guys, you could see that he was like, dude, no. And now life happens, stroke or something. And you could see that there is understanding in eyes and, and being stripped of your rights it's just so humiliating and so it's just to protect yourself from that's yours um so yes you can do the the cost of my 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 trust to start with well as i told tell you each and every person has to have a plan some sort of plan starting at 18 moms with children with no assets there has to be a will so will starts from 1700 will package trust around 3500 uh because i don't do simple people simple i want to say simple there is no simple because i have so many questions during the consultation process often very uncomfortable questions but i have to get to know the family the person to create the proper plan and the plan it's usually standard trust they they do to avoid probate and give to kids 50 50. what it means and uh, uh they do not uh if i go much deeper i i'm trying to see what kind of issues can arise in the future for example remarriage protection remember he, we get uh, one spouse dies then you get model or pool boy guy with the pending and uh, and uh, kids from original marriage can end up with nothing because things change uh you remarry new kids you know your your kids don't like uh, stepmom stepdad and things get sour what we can do we can say hey if i pass away it's from your new property my 50 percent becomes irrevocable so you can do whatever you want with your 50 percent though the vegas gamble or whatever you do because we still have but my 50 percent will go to my kids uh so we we, we make uh, you to sign sign prenuptial agreement and uh, and put it in writing that you cannot do anything uh dispose of the property only exchange then we can say you remember, remember kids receive everything in equal shares usually at the age of 18, if you don't specify the age when they can receive the money. Standard, if you, if you own real estate here in California, it starts with a million, it's already kind of usually, plus some savings, plus maybe, uh, you know, okay. life insurance for 1K, so it grows. So you, if you have two kids, for, for an 18-year-old kid to receive $1 million check, well, nothing's good gonna happen with it. It's gonna do. It's gonna disappear pretty quickly unless you have a very unique child. And uh, even the just a second, even for older kids. So we can. So with that, we can say, hey, 
in a trust document and say, my kids will receive, let's say, at the age of 21, certain percent. When they graduate the university, certain percent. When they get, so you can structure how they're gonna receive. And you can go to extremes. Uh, my daughter asked me at the age of 16, can I get it to two? I'm like, of course you can get it at two, but in, in the trust document, it says, when you're gonna receive inheritance, you have to have the exam at dermatologist's office. And if they see it's a two with scar from tattoo removal, your share will go to other uh, siblings. She's like, mom, you could have just said no. I'm like, no, I'm giving you the option. So I'm like, no. I didn't do that. Uh, so so you, you can, you can you, you've seen all those movies. I have to get two kids and, uh, you know, by the age of 30, or oh, I don't get that means that it's trust. <laughs> so you can be creative and uh, manage your kids from the grave. <laughs> yes. Yes, difference between will, wills and trust. Sir, I saw you then. Uh, uh, wills, wills and trusts. First thing people do especially the older ones who read classics uh, about a statement. Oh, I need a will. That's the default. Mm -hmm. Will is a, if there is in, in the binders, there is, I didn't expect so many people, so there's few. Uh, you, can, you can draw it. <laughs> and uh, um, you, if there's a will, there is probate. Will merely gives a judge an idea who you wanted the property to go to, but it any but it still has to go through full probate process, and anybody can jump into probate. Somebody can raise his hand and say, "Hey, I took care of your mom for the past two weeks, uh, you know, while she was in bed dying, and she promised me fifty thousand dollars." And here you go, evidentiary hearing, a lot of costs, uh, time. Probate process here in Los Angeles takes about two years if everything is nice. Nobody is arguing, everything's good because Los Angeles County, how many millions we have? 12 million people. And we have nine probate judges or things. Uh, I got one of my orders, you know, the, the decisions signed in January. So just said approved everything that I asked for. Everything's been signed. Yes, I received the actual signed order in June. Because they say yes and put it in a stack. And you know, and you remember that mug on the <laughs> file? It was there for a while. Oh, but not that they, they worked about in my one of the cases I'm in front of the judge in the courtroom, he's looking through whatever, and then just told them, hold on. You know, like in cartoons, puts up his robe. And runs and goes to the adjacent courtroom, <laughs> does his case, you know, something else, rules over there, then comes back to finish my case. It's just, uh, I, I cannot blame them, uh, except again against the government. They, 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 they cut all these courts and uh, uh, they reduced the number of judges not to pay them. Uh, sir, you keep me back on me. <laughs> yes. I was the same. Okay, so will wills will not help. No, um, no, it won't. Uh, will is important when there is no assets. When your your assets are under one hundred sixty thousand, then you don't need probably. That's why like uh, parents one hundred sixty thousand. So uh, especially wills are important for people with children, no assets, but children. Cannot stress it out. It's out of our discussion here, but still important because when I ask the question, so what's going to happen to your child? Let's say everybody's alive, but car accident, you're taken to the hospital. Oh, my mom will come, or my sister or my brother will come to pick, pick them up. No, child protective services will come and pick them up because they don't know if your mom is alcoholic or child abuser. They cannot just give child to anybody. That's why it's so simple. A will, uh, will if you pass away, but power of attorney, um, guardians, uh, limited uh, guardianship forms uh, that I provide my clients with, which you can have, you fill it out, daycare, school, glove compartment. 
easy. Just just invest some time, a, a part. People think about you see, you see estate planning is so interesting because I do also bankruptcy, I do personal injury. Those types of family law attorneys, what they do. Person, if you need it, you find the attorney and you call. Estate planning, everybody needs it. <laughs> but nobody, people think about it all the time. Every time you board the plane, you have kids at home, what if? You know, all those what if questions can be answered, just invest several hours of your life, have it done and don't think about it. And there's also cultural uh, ideas of, okay, if I think about it, if I put anything in writing, I can jinx myself, I'm gonna die next day, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, uh, very, you know, but again, with those situations, I talk to people and trying to give them power, actually explaining what's gonna happen actually, and uh, yes. So it seems to me that a will would be more beneficial for the allocation of personal property, whereas a trust would be more beneficial for the allocation of real property. Depends on the uh, on the uh, value. Okay. One hundred sixty thousand. If you have hundred uh, more than one hundred sixty thousand in your uh, bank account, investments, uh, bitcoins, whatever you have, everything your estate consists of, mm -hmm. then it means trusts or okay. or a will. Okay. Will is I'm talking about. There is no assets, but yeah. there are children. Yeah, uh, that's when okay. it's important. Well, can you have a holographic will, or it's better to have somebody in a to do it? it doesn't matter because you have. Yes, so you have two witnesses. You need to have two witnesses. Yeah. Once you have a trust, then you keep opening bank accounts or buying other properties. You need to go see the attorney every time, yeah. or you just need yeah. to keep track of. There are instructions uh, in, in, in my trust, <laughs> so what to do, and I give instructions, and I'm, I don't charge for phone calls like that, what to do, you know, uh, you become my client uh, for life, and I, I give a call to my client in a year, year and a half, any changes, any new kids, new wives, whatever you have in your new house, <laughs> <laughs> new wives or husbands. <laughs> So yes, no, you don't have to. You, I, I tell you, you just you can purchase property right into the name of trust. Right. Be careful of refinancing. Talk to your client, clients about refinancing because whenever they refinance, they have the companies make you take title of trust to your own name, but never tell you put it back into the trust name. And uh, sad situations, you pass away that time, it's not in a, in a trust, again, probate. Yeah. So, very important. So, yes, you, uh, you gave up. Uh, so, uh, what else we can talk about? If somebody has already a trust mm -hmm. and they want to update it and then consult with you and yes. see when, you know, yes. is that? A different fee or you do no there is a fee I, I i do charge for review of the trust uh usually five hundred dollars review and i do not go to the substance because i don't want to be responsible for that trust and most of them are uh not good uh and if they hire me to uh do something do revision that 500 is included in there whatever can you add one property to the trust you can mention it. My idea is that binder becomes your life. So next person coming in, spouse or child, they don't have to go through drawers, call everybody. They open it and they see the whole picture in your peace of mind. Uh, morning, you know, just doing the right thing. Everything's in there so they can see uh, the property uh, abroad. I always recommend my clients to do the planning. You know, usually it's a will sufficient in different countries uh because the inheritance process is usually yeah. easier than here will you uh will you recommend uh when we work with investors or we actually do some uh flips ourselves uh if you have your properties under under an llc and some people do have multiple properties and under one llc yeah, when they should be separate um but for if you're actually doing a flip you should have an acquisition llc while you're doing that project, because if something happened during that, exactly. all your other properties yes. are affected. With LLC, it's very important. Again, if people are trying to say legal Zoom, go to thing like click, click, your LLC is ready, and they spit out the operating agreement. Operating agreement usually doesn't uh, have the succession 
plan. Who gets your interest in case of your departure or disability? Especially important with, uh, with, with partners. Believe me, partners usually last not more than half a year <laughs> uh, supporting the family or person of the other partner. Then something happens, you know, you know very difficult, and the family ends up, ends up with nothing. So very important to look at the LLC. I'll give an example. I had a probate. It was a nine unit. There was a, uh, two partners that had a handshake. One of the partners was on the hard money loan. They were doing a flip. The other partner, three minor children, was on title. The guy died in the middle of the flip. They ended up in probate in the middle of COVID for three years with a hard money loan. Wow. With me talking about hard money now, because he wanted his son was going on three years with probate. They wanted them. Riverside County was even slower than LA County, and it was very bad. It was a very big I mean, who knew you'd be that in your own? Yeah. So they had to decide with this partner. That's not a title. It's all a minute. And not just that. I mean, an employee getting hurt from the job. Yeah. Sometimes they have to like, yeah. people don't have that. Yeah. It was not pretty. It was very sad. It's, it's sad. Unintended, but you really know, the, uh, uh, the situation husband, four year old wife, like newer wife, and older daughter from prior relationship. And he had mother uh, living in different countries. He would support her every month, sending her money. He checks out quickly, unexpectedly. Again, if you don't have a plan, the state has a plan for you. And according to our laws, mom gets nothing. So wife and daughter split multi-million dollar estate. And for whatever reason, they decided not to include mom in anything. And again, and it was so, I mean, I, as a person, understand. I felt bad, but I couldn't do anything, you know. And uh, and it's it's up to you what you do. That's another example of how it's important to make your decision. No, making sure that they do what you want to do, not the state. And what is the inheritance tax if, if you go to probate? Uh, surprisingly, don't tell anybody. California doesn't have this. <laughs> <laughs> that, that taxes is, that's I don't know we tax we've been taxed on everything but that uh, other states do but the the federal tax is uh, uh, the, the the limit uh, tax is almost fifty percent like forty seven five zero yes almost but there is an exemption uh, limit eleven point five million now so it's for only very high uh, um, uh, yes uh, clients high high. Uh, net worth, uh, but that's 11.5 now uh, is going to sunset in 2026. So, and uh, even in Biden, it's been in works for at least two years, or like a year and a half now. They want to lower it, of course, uh, this Trump gave this uh, 11 million, um, to, we don't know, 3.5 or 5.5. 5.5 is kind of that your middle class, but 3.5, two houses yeah. here yeah. south of Ventura, you're done. And for the everything over it, you have to pay the state taxes, which is almost 50%. That's why for those people with their uh, several properties, we can do further planning, it's called asset protection planning, where we can take taxable money, do little tricks, you know, and make it untaxable money. Uh, but that's the whole another story. Uh, there is a possibility to create an irrevocable trust, especially for your maybe older people or high, you know, with a lot of equity. Um, it's a life insurance, right? Uh, irrevocable life insurance. So we, that or the other pro, uh, other trusts, so like irrevocable trust, where you know that this piece of land or this apartment building will last in generations. I want to, you know, so so you can secure it and it becomes unseen to creators, even IRS and bankruptcy. And uh, also it becomes for tax purposes, uh, usually those the way it has uh, benefits. And uh, also irrevocable trusts are important for your older clients who have maybe uh, what people usually, they live their life, they earn money, they save for their retirement. 
you know, don't do fun stuff while you're living and hope that yeah. you're going to travel the world at the age of 65 and then bam, you get sick or whatever happens, you never live your life. And now if you go to the facility, uh, boarding, you know, it's uh, $12,000 a month, medium quality. Uh, and all those uh, savings get depleted pretty fast. We can secure that. We can, we can, we can shield it, put it in irrevocable trust, and making sure that it has, you know, we have it uh, and, and qualify you for Medi-Cal to pay for. Because most people think that uh, Medicare will step in and take care of you while you uh, need long-term care. That's not going to happen up to 90 days. That's it. Then you're on your own. So I think we're going beyond the scope. Um, so basically, living trust is the answer. Must do any type of estate planning. Must do. 18 years old. We have. I have this uh, college uh, program. So 18 year old guy, adult, right? <laughs> Goes to college across the, 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 the across the country. Car accident, ski accident, whatever. His guy friend takes him to the hospital. He's called mom, mom, your son is at this hospital. Mom calls the hospital. They say, who are you? He is an adult and his information is private and protected. We're not gonna share with you. Medical diagnosis and treatment plan or anything. As a mother, you know, you're excited, you're anxious, of course, then you have to fly, you have to, you have to, but it's again, so unnecessary. Power of attorney, healthcare directive, he performs, signed, you're done, you have peace of mind. If anything happens, God forbid, but you're prepared. So it's, it's basically, uh, if, if, you know, for those interested, uh, your, your family's future depends on the decisions you make today. So basically, it's up to you what's going to happen. And it's either you're going to decide or somebody else. And I, I try to make sure that you guys are empowered to decide this. So. And that's just the tip of the iceberg as well. Okay. Okay. Questions? Uh, so basically trust. Any other uh, questions? Is this plan only in California? You have somebody no. in another state? Yes, I can. I can work with other states. Well, there's some information here that she can drop and uh, <clears throat> she can also on the uh, chat, if you can put in your contact information. And there's my uh, <laughs> business card business and all that. There is also QR code. I don't know if it's here. Beautiful. All right, any other questions? We have a couple more things to uh, get through before the end of our team meeting. Maria, any last uh, takeaways? That we know? Oh, again, it's, uh, the, the value that you provide to your clients is your, you know, that you have to touch base with your clients at least three times a year, I don't know if you or four times a year, or just some informational email changes in, you know, in cell five, whatever you guys, I didn't receive those emails. Uh, but one of those can be informational, like, hey, I care about you, here's what you should do, oh, I've recommending to consider this because my idea with the with the events that i'm doing sharing the information is that now you at least know it's and if you decide because there is a plan some people have a plan hey i don't care let these kids fight over it i'm gonna look to my stairs and, uh, and have fun but that's the plan also but it has to be uh but that has to be an informed decision if it's your decision then I'm, then that's okay but when, after I gave you the information, it's up to you for how you're responsible. And if you have an adult child that's alone, not married, you have to pay $10,000 to get to for your guardianship. To even have their insurance paid for it updated, they don't want you to do anything. Yes. Just to get to for your guardianship. Yes. Yes. Very good. All right. Well, Maria, thank you so much. Sure. Maria, with that MVP. I've been most of my uh, team, I love it. She'll be here for a bit. If you have any specific uh, personal questions that you'd like to uh, ask, Maria's 
gonna stick around for a bit. And she, do you have extra of those uh, folders, uh, Maria? No, I missed it. Well, make sure to uh, email her, and then she can yes, send I us a. Or maybe you can send us a pack, uh, a box full of them, and you know we can pass them on to the agents. All right, let's continue real quick. I know we're uh, close on time. Uh, Chris, is Chris here? Yes. Chris, you got two minutes, my friend. Two minutes. Okay, I'll do it in one minute. Better. <laughs> better. Because most of what I have to say is about interest rates, and we all know where they've gone. They're gone up. We're we're hitting mid sixes now, six and a quarter, six and a half, depending on the FICO score and loan amount, the terms of it. That's the bad. The good is they did increase rates today by three quarters of a point. That's actually a good thing for us. We're already seeing the market kind of rebound the other way. It's going to take some time. But we do anticipate them kind of sliding back down, hopefully below six towards the end of the year. So there is some reprieve coming. The feds did announce they're going to do whatever they need to do on a go forward basis, which probably sets up another three quarter bump in November. Because inflation is their hot ticket right now. That's what they've got to get under control. And they are doing it, unfortunately, a little too late, but they are doing it. So that's kind of my two minute spill. Rates are hovering right about the low sixes to mid six, depending on the loan type. Um, we're seeing a lot of ARM products now. Clients are 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 no are knowledgeable about it now. I think you guys are actually pitching it more than I am, so they're asking me the questions about it. Um, and then lastly, I haven't said this: the first time home buyer seminar that we had at the end of August was amazing. We had like close to eighty people, if not more. It was the most incredible event I've ever done. So we're going to pitch another one probably in November. So keep that out there. Um, it's just good stuff for your clients so they can get educated, knowing that there are down payments programs out there to help them get in. So more information on that. But anyway, I think I use two minutes. You got five seconds. Okay. <laughs> no, one of my clients that came over here has yeah. gone to other uh, seminars. He says uh, this seminar has been as far the best they have attended. Just let you know. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I was here when that, that event happened. I mean, it was a full house. Yeah. We were running out of chairs. So. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, let's continue upcoming events real quick. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. All right. Uh, KW Mastermind went with buyers. That'll be uh, to, to visit tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow we'll be What's that? Tomorrow, 2 p.m. Yeah, tomorrow, Thursday, uh, September 22nd, 2 to 3. Uh, many is going to be spearheading that. So please uh, be on the uh, on the Zoom call. Okay, King of the Hill softball tournament. Cheer us on. We need our cheerleaders. It'll be South Bay. Uh, it's this Friday already, guys. This Friday. So the 23rd, it'll be. Well, the team players need to be there early, uh, but I think our first game, I don't know if Hall, uh, Hall is here, I think it's around 11, 11.30, so you don't have to be there super early, but the team players that are going to be playing need to be there early, uh, just so, so we know exactly what feel and all the good stuff. Uh, so yeah, love to uh, have the uh, spirit of KW South Bay, obviously the culture as well, uh, this coming Friday. Next slide. All right, Manny's favorite, chili cookout. Who's ready for it? Remember last year? I think Michelle Brown was the, uh, took the uh, took the win on that one, right? So that'll be Wednesday, October 5th, uh, 1 p.m., following our team meeting. So, you know, we're already here. We might as uh, make the best of it. And I think we're going to skip. I, I don't know, Fred. Where's Fred at? I saw, thought I saw him. Fred, are we still having our, we're, we're going to bypass, right, our, Mentorship on that day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we'll we'll push on that. So again, uh, potluck suggested baked potatoes, cornbread, uh, nachos, uh, potatoes, tacos, greens, and dessert. And then obviously we will give a uh, prize to the uh, best uh, chili. All right. So make sure to bring it on. All right. Let's <laughs> let's uh, let's see who's going to have the best uh, chili. All right, KW Cares presents uh, every ticket is a donation to KW Cares. This is the uh, multiplier of your business. That'll be Thursday, October 6th. I'm not sure. Um, uh, next slide, I believe it's based on the uh, guest speaker. So we have Mo Anderson, Mark Keene, Jason Abram, Dave Papazon, and the rest of the uh, leaderships there as well. So it'll be a great, and all of the proceeds will go to KW Cares. So it's a great uh, panelist of uh, awesome uh, you know, guest speakers. So. Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a Thursday uh, our time. I think it's 
maybe early, uh, right? To uh, whatever noon. Uh, yeah. I sign up. You know, even if you're not going to attend, one of the bucks went to our you know charity, the the company culture. But definitely make an effort to show up because again, it's going to be twenty to thirty speakers. That's a lot. Uh, yeah. uh, tons of information. It's going to be super interesting to see Where? what they're doing. It's on the Zoom world. Oh. Yeah, you have to have a passport to get this. Um, <laughs> so it's on Zoom. So just just sign up in between your whatever you, you do. Just tune in and listen in. Okay. So uh, we're gonna show the, the links again. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thanks for sharing. All right, let's continue. Uh, again, just a quick reminder: our California Association of Realtors Annual Realtors Conference and Expo, October 11th, just around the corner, folks. I mean, we're already at the uh, end of September. It'll be here locally at the Long Beach Convention Center. So. Leadership is going to be there. Any of you going to be there? Uh, so far, it's about 50 of us. <laughs> yeah, 50. The, the, the Three offices. offices, yeah. So, uh, you know, if you've never been to a big convention, real estate wise, right. uh, if you didn't get a chance to, you know, afford to go to Mega Camp, you know, stay in a different state, and be the, you know, you have two of the big ones as a company, this one costs you a uh, cost of gas and, uh, and a sandwich for lunch. Uh, well, it's, uh, it, it's, you know, it's free admission if you go into the two days, which we're going to go the 12th and the 13th. So join us. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be speakers from, uh, you know, different companies, organizations, coaches, and uh, I don't know how many, you know, thousands, thousands of, uh, of people. Yeah. From, from, from it's fun. And, it, and if you've never been to one of these uh, car events, I encourage you to uh, do so. It's an eye opener and a lot of nuggets you'll pick up from this event. And if you're a member, it's free. So take advantage of it. Next slide. All right, Command Your Con, Command Con, a uh, live virtual event. It'll be uh, November 9th, so you've got plenty of uh, time. Nick Bowen, our uh, regional tech trainer, and uh, Jason Ingram will spare you that uh, live streaming. So uh, you can register on that. Uh, just take a photo of it and you can go right in. And it's completely free. So there's no, no charge there. All right, next slide. I think that's it. Oh, family reunion. Again, just a quick reminder, it is our 40th uh, anniversary for KW. It'll be here locally in Anaheim, February 18th, uh, February 18th through the uh, 21st. It's in person and tickets are 999. Right? You've got till September 30th before that price goes up. So, okay, next slide. That's a nice number, right? 999. All right. Uh, anyone I uh, like to pitch their uh, listing, fire needs? Aaron. I have a new listing in South Redondo, um, 211 South Francisca. It's going to be brokers open tomorrow and open uh, a showing. Um, only during brokers uh, from 12 to 4 and Saturday and Sunday from uh, 12 to 5. It's uh, four bedrooms, uh, three bathrooms. 2200 square feet, uh, it's 1,798,000. 1,798,000. Good price, Redondo, right? Mm -hmm. Right here, Redondo. Awesome. How did you get that lead? Uh, online, an online lead. Beautiful. Awesome. Cool. Anyone else? Yes, Fred. Two things. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a listing of Vixer and Pomona. Uh, price right now in MLS is 650. It's about to be reduced to 620. <laughs> Uh, we do have multiple offers on it, but if anybody knows anybody who's looking for a fixer, three bedroom, two bath, 7,000 plus square feet on the lot uh, in Pomoda, right across from Beaver Park, let them know. Two, um, Career Compass will be here on October 19th. Um, I'm talking about uh, how to get 7% more, 7% over list price. So everyone is invited. And then three, today at 1 30. Um, uh, lead list challenge that we're doing. All right, stick around. You know, Fred had mentioned last week about the uh, Blitz uh, challenge. So be here at uh, 1 30 to uh, get some more information and be part of that. So awesome. Thank you, Fred. All right, anyone else going once, going? Yeah, me. me. Oh, yes. <laughs> hold on, let me switch real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> One second, because I got it. Let me switch it because then that way everyone can hear you. I apologize. So, okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you. I have a listing in Sacramento. It's a four bedroom, three bath. I have an agent helping me there, but in case then you have anybody 
looking for a nice area. Um, it's a single family resident, three bedroom, two bath, 6,500 square footage the lot, and the living space is 1,100. The price is 365, I just listed, and it's going below market because it's a divorce. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Going one, going five. All right. Does that conclude? Yes. So, by the way, it's about the probate. You just mentioned about it. Somebody mm -hmm. tells you that, you know, the house is in probate. Do not, I know sometimes they just, oh, I don't do that every time. It's going to work. Can I uh, can teach you? I can explain how to go through the process. Uh, you know, get more uh, knowledge about it. Also, for my uh, centers of interest, which is you are, or uh, you know, agents for people who potentially can get from a client, of course, my class is different. So I, I would uh, just uh, okay. 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 a little more yeah, maybe we can actually have a workshop where you come and it's strictly just, you know, all about. We can, we can create this scenario. Yeah. So. Beautiful. Uh, I'll have you uh, speak with um, Colin so that way we can put you on the guest calendar. So that way, if you want to just do the workshop with uh, Maria. Wonderful. Thank you, Maria. All right, team. Well, that concludes. There's, I believe, still some sandwiches. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, one party.